Hi there everybody, Jack here again at the Vinyl Voyage. So, two titans of the UK indie scene from the 80s and 90s have dropped their first collaborative album. Yep, we are talking about Liam Gallagher, ex-frontman and Hellraiser from Oasis, and ex-Stone Roses legendary guitar player John Squire, Mega, if you like that sort of thing. So then, this collaboration, not supergroup, is a dream come true for many middle-aged men across the UK, and as well as that, um, Liam Gallagher's built up almost like a new following of younger fans with a lot of his new solo albums. So Liam Gallagher has always been a big, big supporter of the Stone Roses. He cites the band as his major influence, along with the Beatles. But it was the Stone Roses that he said got him into playing music and influenced him to go and start a band himself. This isn't the first time that the two have collaborated together. Back when the Stone Roses broke up, John Squire formed the Seahorses, and in 1997 they put out their debut album, and there's a song on there, Love Me or Leave Me, where Liam Gallagher gets a co-writing credit. I believe that was his first ever writing credit. And since then, Squire has guested twice on stage with Liam Gallagher. Uh, when Liam Gallagher's played these massive sold-out Nebworth shows, Squire's come on stage for Champagne Supernova, played absolutely blistering guitar um, for the kind of outro of Champagne Supernova, with Liam introducing him the second time as the legendary John Squire, or the legend that is John Squire. I believe it was backstage at Nebworth where Squire first um, threw out the idea of potentially collaborating with Liam on this album. So Squire had built up a bank of songs. I think these are songs that date back to around about 2012, when the Stone Roses had get back together for the reunion tour. And it's probably quite plausible that these were songs that had been written for a third Stone Roses album, obviously an album that never ever happened. But he was keen to get back into music and his first thought was to collaborate with a female singer. Now, if you've heard Squire's solo albums, you'd know that he's not the most confident singer. I think he's an absolutely fantastic songwriter. He's a um, world-class guitarist, but I love his, his songwriting. So this was John Squire's first solo album. It came out in 2002. It's called Time Changes Everything. I think it's an absolutely brilliant album. Um, some great songs on here. Joe Louie, Shine a Light, Transatlantic Near Death Experience. The title track, Time Changes Everything, is really, really good as well. His vocals in this come across a little bit a little bit like Dylan. You can, you can tell on this album that he's trying to find his voice. He's trying to make it work, but he doesn't sound like a natural singer. And I think what's worse is he didn't come across as a confident singer. So this is Marshall's House. It's Squire's second album from 2004. And it's a concept album built around the paintings of the US artist Edward Hopper. Each song on it, there's 11 songs, and each song is based around one of Edward Hopper's paintings. But the problem with this album is that instead of finding his voice or getting more confident in his own voice, Squire actually sounds less confident. The songs aren't quite as good as the first album. They're still good songs, but I think he realised on this album that he wasn't a natural frontman, and yeah, he definitely lost confidence because we'd never seen another solo album from John Squire after that. With John Squire looking for someone to collaborate with, I think a female um, singer would have been really, really good. It would have been really, really interesting and something different. But I think he went with Liam Gallagher. I think there's obviously that... Manchester connection. I think he likes him as a person and he's almost like the polar opposite of John Squire. John Squire's very quiet and thoughtful and unassuming, whereas obviously Liam Gallagher is very bullshit. He's in your face. He's very, very confident. So I think that was an interesting collaboration as well on paper. With Liam Gallagher obviously being the bigger star, there's been a lot, a lot of hype surrounding this album and a lot of it has been very, very negative. I watched a review yesterday of the album by the channel Oasis WTS, and I thought I really agreed with a lot of the points he made. The first kind of point that he made was that a lot of the negativity, and I think this is within the Oasis fandom, a lot of the negativity seemed to be that it was an absolutely terrible album. They trashed it almost from the very first song, and he came out and said, well, what did you expect? Another thing that he went on to say on his review, which I totally agree with as well, was I, I don't really see where all the hate's coming from, especially 
as the album only dropped on Friday. It seems really strange. You've got one of the best guitarists to come out of the UK in the last 30 years. Um, whether you like Liam Gallagher or not, I don't think he's the worst singer. Um, I can see that he's a very dev divisive character in the way he behaves. But personally, I would prefer my rock stars to have a personality rather than some of these bland, cardboard, cut-out, two-dimensional guys that we have in a lot of bands nowadays. So before I get into the review of the actual music itself, I'm going to caveat this review by telling you where I stand in terms of Oasis, Stone Roses and all that kind of thing. So I'm a massive, massive Stone Roses fan. I saw them back in, I think it was 94 in the second coming tour in Glasgow. I've seen them in their last gig, was it 2017 at Hamden, which was absolutely atrocious. One of the worst live gigs I've ever been to, but I think as much as anything, that was the terrible sound at Hamden Park. Now, in terms of Oasis, I loved Definitely Maybe. That was a soundtrack to one of my first holidays away with my mates to Tenerife when I was about um, 17 or something like that. I loved Supersonic. I loved Shaker Maker, Rock and Roll Star. So that mix of the Sex Pistols and the Beatles, I thought it was brilliant. I loved the first album. The second album, What's the Story, Morning Glory, quite enjoyed that as well. Obviously, they were shot to mega stardom, certainly in the UK, when that came out. But moving on from that album, I've not really been a big fan. I don't really like the way that Liam Gallagher's voice has developed. I don't like that kind of nasal sound. It almost sounds like he needs some Vicks under his nose. He sounds a bit bunged up at times. So I'm, I'm not a fan of no Gallagher's later stuff, Liam Gallagher's later stuff. It's okay. I'm, I've got no hate towards it, but it's not something that I would choose to listen to. But what about this album then? So let's have a look. I got the deluxe edition. I said this dropped on Friday. I was going to do the review on Friday, but then I had the chance to buy um, a nice collection and that, that trumped reviewing this. And then I put it on the back burner for a couple of days and I thought, oh, it's maybe not a bad thing. It gives me a few days to properly absorb it and uh, get a good listen. So here we go. As you can notice, the title is Liam Gallagher, John Squire. And I think it's really, they really set their stall out and they're very clear that this is a collaborative effort between the two. But we'll come on to more of that later. I like the type and I think it looks really, really clean and quite classy. But what about the artwork? The artwork is horrendous. Oh, it's so, so bad. You know, you think John Squire put this artwork together. He's a noted artist. I love all the stuff that he did with the Stone Roses. This is just horrible. It looks so cheap. It looks like he knocked it up in five minutes on Microsoft Paint. It's really bad. And I see if you read the back, it said that it was a collaboration between himself and Jamie Hutchinson. How did he how did he need to collaborate on that? You know, it's really, really terrible, all these household items. I don't know. I don't get it at all. I think is it meant to show how pop music is disposable? It's become mundane and yeah, I don't know. I think it just looks terrible. It's the inside cover. More of these horrible kind of clip art images. And it comes with various bits and pieces. It's got more of this horrible artwork. These are little stickers. Great. Um, it also gave you access to the, the live gigs. You have the option, or first option, supposedly, on the tickets. But I believe, I believe a lot of people who bought the album, and um, they still couldn't get tickets. And it comes with this poster. So I've got this horrendous artwork on a big poster as well that will never grace my walls. So the vinyl itself, I think that's quite nice. The split blue and red coloured vinyl. So what about the music then? So the album opens up with Raise Your Hands. It's a kind of mid-tempo, upbeat, positive song that you can tell has been written. It sounds like it's been written for um, the, the live gigs. It reminds me a little bit of the Stone Roses comeback single, um, All For One. has that kind of same feel about it. But for me, I don't like the, the lyrics. It sounds a bit lame. There's some nice... Guitar flourishes from Squire, but overall, I, th I think it's one of the weakest songs in the album. So next up then, we have Mars to Liverpool. 
So this was the second single. I wasn't overly impressed with the first one, but when I heard the second single, I really, really liked it. It's got such a great guitar line running through it. It sounds kind of glammy. It actually reminded me of this from um, children's television in the 80s, Green Show, the Green Show theme. But I think it's really cool. I love the, the lyrics as well. Jesus Christ, about last night, I can only apologise. Come on now, who's not had a heavy night out in the town and not felt like that the next morning? Really, really relatable lyrics for me anyway. And um, I absolutely love this single. For me, this is probably the best song on the album. Further, I bet you anything that it was a lyric that Liam Gallagher could really relate to. I'm sure he's had plenty of mornings where he's thought, oh no, I need to apologise for last night. It's really, really upbeat, the song. It sounds a little bit Stone roses especially in the, the chorus, those nice little arpeggios. But um, yeah, the guitar sparkle, it's upbeat. This was everything really that I would have wanted from the album. So next up then, you've got One Day at a Time. That's a song that really opens really nicely with some Spanish sounding acoustic guitars. But they open with a nice little riff and then the electric guitars come in. For me, it would have been a bit more interesting if it had continued acoustically. It is a nice song. Again, it's upbeat. It's got a kind of feel good lyric. And again, it's another really cool song. But just going back to that title, by track three, you kind of realise that this is fully about Liam Gallagher and really, really about John Squire. So the other two guys then playing in the band, you've got Joey Voronka, he's a session drummer from America, and he's played predominantly, he came to fame in the 90s playing with Beck. He's played in Beck's biggest albums all through his golden age of Odelay, Mutations, Sea Change, um, I think he played on Midnight Vultures as well, Guero, Modern Guilt, all those great, great albums. He's also played with Elliot Smith, and when Bill Berry, um, moved on from R.E.M. He took up the drum stool for R.E.M. as well. I think he played an Up and Reveal. So on bass duties and production as well is Greg Kirsten. So he's like a really, really famous um, pop producer. He's produced Adele, Lily Allen, um, Beck, some of Beck's later albums that I'm not so keen on those, like um, Colours. But he also plays bass. What else does he play? I think he plays Hammond organ, Wurlitzer organ. Um, I think he plays Mellotron, Vibraphone, Synths. So they're the other two guys in the band. But for me, even by track three, you can see that it's really about John Squire. The, the, all the space, really, is taken up by John Squire's guitar leads. And that's not a bad thing for me, especially. I like John Squire. I love his guitar playing, and that's pretty much the whole reason I bought the album. But it doesn't sound like a super group. Um, and Liam Gallagher was clear to point that out. This is a collaboration. And as much as Liam's a singer, for me, it's still really this album's about John Squire and his songs and his guitar playing. So next up then is I'm a Wheel, which sounds like John Squire has been listening to a bit of John Mayo's Blues Breakers. It sounds like a kind of electric blues number, and it sounds different from what you would normally expect from John Squire. And it's definitely different for Liam Gallagher. I've never heard him sing a blues song like that before. And to be fair to Liam, he does a really good job on it. The verses, they sound kind of traditional blues. And like I said, Liam's voice does a, does a good job. He sounds comfortable. And then when it goes into the choruses, it sounds more like a contemporary pop song. But I actually like that. I like the, I like the kind of juxtaposition between these bluesy verses going into more contemporary, upbeat chorus. And I think it works really, really well. It's one of the stronger songs on the album. To close side one of the album then, we have Just Another Rainbow, which is more than a passing nod to the Beatles. It's very much like the Beatles' reign, especially with those drums and bass. So while this song is derivative of the Beatles around about that Revolver era, it has grown on me, and at least this song gives the, the bass and the drums something more interesting to do. It also gives the opportunity for Squire to put in a lot of these really nice psychedelic flourishes. Liam's vocals as well on this one, I think, sound really, really good. It's exactly the type of song that Liam Gallagher would enjoy singing. He does get a little bit nasally at times, but overall, it sounds pretty good. The worst thing about this song, though, and it's been said by other people as well, is the lyrics. It's gibberish about um, rainbows and windmills, and then when they break into the primary colours, the colours of the rainbow, Again, I just can't get on board with that at all. I can't think of anything worse. You know, someone had said, oh, it'll be brilliant when they do that in the live shows and everyone's singing along. I can't think of anything worse than that. 
It sounds horrible, um, but we'll see. Flipping over then to side two, it kicks off with Love You Forever, which c- continues in a similar vein. This one is very, very Hendrixy, somewhere between Foxy Lady and Voodoo Child. But again, it's just a vehicle for John Squire's guitar playing. That being said, the guitar sounds brilliant. I don't think it's a fantastic song, but some of um, Squire's technical playing in this sounds absolutely brilliant. The drums also sound heavier in this song, and Liam Gallagher's voice is treated to some psychedelic effects, which kind of keep it in um, this kind of 60s-influenced vibe that the album has as a whole. So even with John Squire going full tilt on the guitar, it would be nice if he showed some subtlety. I think he does a bit on uh, Mars to Liverpool, but you know, if you think back to songs from the Stone Roses like Bye Bye Bad Man or Shoot You Down, where there's you know, there's there's space for the other instruments to come through, and it complements his guitar playing as well. He's a bit of a lighter touch. Everything sounds, I don't know, a little bit too forced for me up to this point. It would be really, really nice to hear some of the really beautiful, delicate guitar playing that John Squire's noted for. But everything's a little bit obvious, a little bit too in your face. Next, we have then Make It Up As You Go Along, and this, thankfully, is another beauty. Um, It's up there with Mars to Liverpool for me. Squire plays a really, really nice little guitar line, and it kind of flip-flops between sounding a little bit Beatles-y, a little bit Kinks. But on this one, he does start leaving space for the drums and the bass to come through as well, and it really, really benefits the song overall. I think Liam's vocals on this song are really, really good as well. Potentially the best vocal on the whole album. He doesn't have quite so much of that nasal sound coming through. So this has got a really laid-back vibe to it, this song. And it's got nonsensical lyrics as well, but unlike Just Another Rainbow, it just works better. Uh, I really, really like this. Next then, we up the tempo for the next one. It's called You're Not The Only One, and it is a kind of barnstorming 12-bar blues number. It's got some really cool thumping drums, and I really like the heavy piano sound that comes in as well on this. So while Liam Gallagher and John Squire were sharing ideas and demos and constructing this album, they also shared a number of their favourite artists, I think, for inspiration. One of the artists that John Squire passed over to Liam was Humble Pie, and specifically the song 30 Days in the Hole. And this definitely has a real Humble Pie feel about it, this song, albeit without the wonderful Stevie Marriott's blue-eyed soul vocals. And to be honest, while Liam Gallagher might not be Steve Marriott, he does a really good job with the vocals on this in a style that, again, wouldn't be something that would be so familiar with him. So the second last song on the album is I'm So Bored. It's got a kind of cyclical guitar riff that plays over and over. And it sounds really something a bit like one of the solo songs on um, Marshall's House, Squire's second album. And to be honest, it's probably my least favourite song on the album. And while John Squire's guitar riff um, sounds good, it drives the song along. The lyrics and the vocal melody themselves are quite boring and it's quite uh, ironic in a song, I'm So Bored. That's kind of the way I felt listening to it. So the song presents a big long list of things that John finds boring, things in modern life that are kind of boring. And it kind of reminds me of the album cover. These are all kind of boring things to do with modern life and it almost kind of reflects that. And as much as some, again, some of the guitar playing is good, I said the vocal melody isn't great and... Ultimately, the song sounds a little bit boring. So the album closes with Mother Nature's Son, and thankfully, it's probably the most beautiful song on the album. The most delicate song, certainly. It's a lot less in your face than some of the other ones, and it gives a nice little bit of contrast to the earlier songs in the album. This is a slower, spacier song with lots of lyrical imagery highlighting the beauty of nature. Squire's guitar playing is a lot more delicate on this as well. Um, plays some beautiful guitar lines where he allows his guitar to ring out a little bit more. He leaves space for the other instruments and for Liam's vocal as well. And I think Liam, again, does a great job with the vocals on this. It's a really, really beautiful vocal melody and a brilliant, brilliant way to finish the album on a positive note. So ultimately then for me, Liam Gallagher and John Squire's album is a little bit the good, the bad and the ugly. So the good then, Squire's back. That's a big, big positive for me. I'm a massive John Squire fan and he's someone that has to be recording music, he has to be writing music so it's brilliant to have him back. His guitar playing on here I think is excellent overall. He'd broken his thumb 
or had seriously damaged his thumb playing basketball. Previous to releasing this album, he was unsure whether he'd ever be able to play guitar to the same level again. So it's great to see that he can. That'd be a big, big positive. I said the songs are good on the album overall. I don't think it's his best songwriting, but songs are pretty good. I think that Liam Gallagher did a good job with some of the stylistic shifts, singing in a in a style that maybe he wouldn't normally have sang on songs like I'm a Wheel. I think as well that Liam brings a real enthusiasm to this album. You know, it's not every day that an artist gets to sing with their hero, and you can quite clearly see that Liam Gallagher really, really adores, worships John Squire. So I think that brings a real positivity and vibrance to a lot of the songs. Whether you like Liam or not, I think, you know, this is as good as anything he's put out for me in recent years. Now for the bad. So while this is a good album, it's not a great album or it's not a classic album. And for me, the main reason behind that is it's a vehicle for John Squire to live out his Jimmy Page fantasies. The album is built around John Squire's guitar playing. They're good songs, but they're not great songs. And I think that if the bass and the drums had been allowed to maybe come more to the fore, or they experimented, experimented more with other instruments, I think that that would have raised the, the album further. But going back to the good, it's brilliant to have Squire back, and if this is the start of him producing music again, I'm sure that he's got more in him. And now for the ugly. There we go. There's nothing else ugly about this album, but that cover is horrendous. I'm not overly bothered a lot of the time with artwork, but when your principal member of the band is a professional artist, he makes his living as an artist. Come on. I, I reckon I could have knocked that up in 10 minutes. It's absolutely terrible. But, you know, let's not finish on a sour note. Realistically, this album's not really going to convert any non-believers. If you didn't like Liam Gallagher before, you're probably not going to like him now. If you're in the Liam Gallagher's a wanker fan club, you're probably still going to think he's a wanker. This album will do very little to change your mind. But if you like UK indie pop and you love the Stone Roses, you love the Oasis, I'm sure you'll love this album. I think, you know, you need to be very, very cynical to listen to the album objectively and say that it's trash. It's not a bad album. Squire's an absolutely fantastic guitarist. And while you might not like Liam Gallagher, the songs are good and they're delivered well. That's kind of the end of the review. Let's see how the live dates turn out for Squire Gallagher. I'm off to see him in Berlin, um, tying it in with a visit to family out there on the 4th of April. So you never know, I might even raise my hands for that first song. So that's it then with the review. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, please. Um, love for you to subscribe. I'm trying to put out, on average, about two videos a week. Any comments, I'd love to hear them. Until the next time then, see you later.